Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled Why didn't they design the Boeing 777 with a side stick? Funny you should ask. Now I've got kind of a unique perspective in this. I've done quite a bit of uh, uh, research on side sticks or as Boeing likes to call them, small displacement controllers. In fact, um, I have a very unique perspective because I'm probably, or at the time at least, I was the only non-Boeing pilot, non-Boeing person at all, who had seen a test report that Boeing had conducted on uh, possibly using a side stick or small displacement uh, controller. And uh, that uh, had some very interesting conclusions, and uh, which is one reason it hasn't gotten out very much. And also I have an interesting relationship with Airbus because of my uh, involvement with side stick uh, research. And I'm going to have another uh, presentation on that because there, there's a lot of material there. Anyway, the uh, president of ALPA, Randy Babbitt at the time, uh, got called by the head of Airbus with uh, asking the question, uh, did all of ALPA hate Airbus or was it just Ron Rogers? And uh, yeah, that was kind of funny. I knew uh, Randy quite well. We had, uh, he'd actually been along in one of my flight evaluations in an ATR 42-72. Um, so we, we knew each other and we'd worked together. So um, that was kind of a, a funny question and we discussed it. And, and, and I'll talk about that in the presentation where I talk about Airbus and uh, side stick controller issues. Now here's the Airbus cockpit of the 320 and the uh, yellow arrow points to the uh, side stick there. Now I've got a lot of time in both seats. I was a, uh, a line check airman in the Airbus so I've uh, flown instructional flights on it and that's part of the issue with um, uh, the whole side stick issue that I'll, that I'll get into in another presentation. But here is the typical side stick. Um, they're essentially a uh, duplicated mirror image left and right. That little red button is the uh, takeover button in case you want to take control uh, from the other pilot. And there's uh, a number of reasons you can do that. Um, but that's what that little button is for. And there's a little thing that says priority left and priority right. Now, because of my background and my involvement, I was chairman of uh, ALPA National uh, Committees on New Aircraft Design and Certification, and I had a fairly good background in, in this sort of thing, evaluating the aircraft. I've flown uh, essentially all the modern, uh, and some not so modern, uh, transport aircraft used in uh, commercial service. And by not so mo modern, I've flown the DC-3 and the Boeing 247. Uh, the Boeing 247 was a, a special, uh, unique opportunity. Uh, did that uh, courtesy of Boeing, actually. Um, but anyway, um, I've flown the Airbus, the Boeing, and I like them both. Um, good and bad parts on both. And, uh, you know, uh, de Havilland, um, ATR, and uh, various other uh, small manufacturers, Saab, uh, places like that. Now, back in the late 70s, Kelspan Corporation had a B-26 that they had specially configured uh, with the right cockpit, or what would have normally been the co-pilot's cockpit. They could put a stick in there, a center six side stick. They could put a yoke. The left cockpit was your basic B-26. And they used this in the test pilot school, and they had uh, an electronic flight control system that could make this aircraft uh, fly with adverse yaw, proverse yaw. They could make it fly like a B-52. They could make it fly like a fighter within limits, okay, um, because you still do have the aerodynamic capabilities of the aircraft that it, it you know, it won't roll uh, 720 degrees a second like a uh, T-38, but you can make it have various flight characteristics. You can make it very stable, unstable. It's used in the test pilot school to teach uh, test pilot students um, how various aircraft fly. And this was one of their in-flight uh, laboratories. They also had a uh, Learjet, uh, and this was one of the uh, original prototype Learjets, so it's a very historic aircraft, and it had the same basic setup as the B-26. Uh, and I flew this also. I flew the B-26 and uh, the Learjet in-flight simulator, and you could do the same thing. You could make it fly like a very stable aircraft. You could make it fly like an extremely unstable aircraft that uh, any time you put in a control, it tended to diverge on you. And you could actually, they actually showed you that you could have aircraft that that had terrible flight characteristics, unstable, divergent, things like that, and you could actually uh, fly the aircraft. Uh, and this aircraft, uh, the Learjet, superseded uh, the B-26. Uh, unfortunately, a week before the B-26 was to be retired, um, uh, 
from uh, Calspan and from use, it crashed out at uh, um, Edwards. Uh, and the, uh, the two test pilot school students and the instructor, unfortunately, were killed. And of course, later they developed the Vista aircraft where they used an F-16 and uh, they could they could do um, a lot more of this aircraft. This was after my time, so I unfortunately uh, never got a chance to fly it. I tried to finagle one, but it, it uh, unfortunately just didn't work out. But I was involved with uh, uh, a lot of Calspan reports as far as being uh, familiar with them, and they did a lot of work uh, in this regard. Uh, they, uh, they developed the flight control uh uh, laws and structure for things like the uh, the stealth fighter, uh, the space shuttle, and um, uh, the F-22, the F-16. It goes back a very long ways. They have a lot of good work, a lot of background, and I was involved with trying to put together a test program. That's why I got the call from Airbus, because uh, they, they thought uh, that I was... Um, trying to cause problems with their design. Let's put it that way. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is Calspan had an extremely uh, sophisticated and deep background in flight control systems for aircraft. So what Boeing did was they asked um, Calspan to look uh, to do in-flight simulations and to give them their thoughts on using a side stick for the uh, 777. Now, I don't have a, a copy of this report. Actually, I, I was um, brought into the office of a very senior uh, VP at Boeing and because I had asked about this report. And he had the report there on a desk, and he, he um, sat me down with the report, and he said, there's a copy machine. You can make any copies that you want. I ended up not, out of courtesy to Boeing, making any copies. I probably should have just had them for reference. Uh, you know, now it would be nice to have. But I didn't make any copies. But the report was very interesting, and this is why Boeing um, never really let it out, at least at the time. Uh, because basically, Calspan came back and said, man, using a stick would be great. It'd be wonderful. And there's a lot of pilots who've flown Airbus, and then they come to Boeing and say, why can't I have a side stick instead of that yoke that's always in, in front of me in the way? Uh, you know, the, the Airbus has a beautiful tray table, and of course, Eating is very important to airline pilots. You can take that tray table, you can fold it out, you can put your uh, uh, crew meal on there. And um, actually a French pilot, uh, when I was uh, jump seating from Paris down to Toulouse, told me it would uh, support the weight of a French flight attendant. So that's a little data point for anybody who's interested there. But anyway, um, a lot of people say, why didn't they do that? And Calspan came back and said, that's a good thing to do. They thought it'd be nice to have a little uh, side stick controller over there in the side. And, you know, lots of airplanes have them. Uh, of course, all modern fighters uh, have, uh, uh, you know, sticks either center or on the, uh, or on the side, like the F-16. Space Shuttle had two center sticks. And the interesting thing about this, and this is part of my uh, research thing, is these sticks are coupled. When you move one stick, the other stick moves. This isn't true in Airbus, and that was, to me, a training issue, and it's also a monitoring issue. And Frank Santoni, who was the chief test pilot on the uh, 777-300, John Cashman was on the 200 and did the first flight in that, but Frank Santoni, uh, they were at a um, uh, display one time, and he had the one of the Airbus uh, test pilots with him, and the Airbus test pilot is sitting in the seat, and uh, he asked Frank, says, uh, why, uh, why don't you guys have a side stick controller? And Frank says, well, take your head and, and put it right on top of the yoke there, and uh, look over at me, put it right on top of the yoke. And, well, the, uh, the Airbus test pilot got sucked into this, so he puts his head right on top of the yoke, and Frank takes and he does that, and he hits him in the ear. He says, that's why, because I can tell what the other pilot is doing with the yoke. Um, and being an instructor, you know, 
I don't ride the controls. I'm firmly against that. You keep your you keep your hands any any force off the controls, but you can feel with your fingertips near it, and the other the other person doesn't feel that, but you can feel the the stick move. And the, the thing that uh, happens if and, and most of the time people in in these aircraft are pretty good pilots, but if somebody puts in an abrupt or inappropriate control, you know it before the aircraft reacts. That's the problem with Airbus. The aircraft takes about two and a half seconds to react to a large input, and I had a captain I was checking out. We were coming in to land on a 2-2 right at O'Hare, and we had a little gust, and he made a totally inappropriate um, input, very large, very excessive, and uh, I didn't realize it until the nose really violently pitched up, and we had to make a go around from that. If if I had at least known it, uh, it would have been easier to um, possibly intervene, and uh, also it would have been uh, uh, a little bit easier to know what was going on ahead of time, and a little bit better on the debrief, because it took a while to kind of figure out what exactly was going on. So, Boeing's contention, why they don't want the what they call the small displacement controller as opposed to a side stick, is that you can monitor the other pilot better. Now, I have my own personal opinion about this, and that is that um, Boeing has, has always had yokes, and if they were to go to a side stick controller after Airbus came out with it, that would be kind of admitting that... Um, Airbus was leading the design and leading technology and Boeing was following. And I think there was a certain um, attitude uh, that we don't want to be seen as a, a follower. We want to be seen as a, a leader and we're not giving up the yokes, which has been at aircraft, with aircraft for a very long time. Um, but my uh, concern about the side stick controllers on um, Airbus is that you can't get the feedback. And uh, that's the thing when I was uh, developing a test program out at uh, uh, Edwards with the NASA people to evaluate coupled side sticks that uh, I got myself in trouble with Airbus. And the other thing that's interesting is I found out a lot of history once I was kind of pushing this. Uh, a few glasses of wine with the Airbus test pilots over there in Toulouse. Um, and some very interesting uh, facts came out about their design, issues they had encountered, and things they had tried. So I'm going to cover that in another presentation. But I hope this was interesting and informative, and thanks for watching.